Hey guys, today I'm going to be going through my thoughts and impressions of Nintendo's digital event. Um, this is not scripted in any way, this is just me talking about my thoughts in general, so apologies in advance if I repeat myself or stumble at all. Um, so it's no secret uh, by now that Nintendo's digital event didn't deliver the goods. Um, well, not the, what fans wanted anyway. It was pretty disappointing for Nintendo fans. Uh, that said, it wasn't all bad. You know, there were some good games in there. It just wasn't necessarily what we wanted or what everyone expected. Anyway, in this video, I'll just be covering the digital event, really, and I'll add some points in at the end. Uh, I'm also going to be making a top five best moments from Nintendo's E3 and a top five uh, Nintendo's worst moments from E3. Uh, so be sure to check them out after this video. Anyway, we'll kick things off with Nintendo's digital event. Um, it actually opened really, really well. Uh, the presentation was amazing. Uh, the, the use of the Muppets was great. I was hoping Nintendo would do something quirky like that, especially after last year's. So that that, that was awesome. I was really happy with that. Um, and then Star Fox. Star Fox was everything we thought and wanted it would be. So like I said, it was a really strong start. Uh, and then it all kind of just went a bit downhill. Uh, mainly because there was no real surprise. There was no suspense. It was just really drab, really boring, I guess. And just kind of plodded along uh, with nothing there to really get you on the edge of your seats. Um, I think the biggest issue, for me anyway, was there was too much focus on games we already knew about. Uh, which I didn't think they would do. I honestly thought that Yoshi's Woolly World, Xenoblade, uh, Fire Emblem, uh, Fate it's called now, um, would take a back seat because we, we know a lot about those games already. I thought that, you know, they'd save them for the, the Treehouse event. You know, that they were absolutely right to elaborate and show new content for those games, but I think they could have done it outside the digital event because essentially the digital event is where you're trying to capture you know, new fans, I guess, and excite existing fans. Um, so, for me, that was probably the biggest surprise and the biggest letdown. The next thing as a whole that I think they did wrong was they announced franchises we wanted, but not in the way we wanted them. Uh, but I'll elaborate on that a bit more as we go on. So, directly after Star Fox, um, Again, bear with me if I get this wrong, because I'm just going off memory of what they announced in what order, so I could be completely wrong. So directly after Star Fox, we got the Skylanders crossover. Now, this confused me. If I was going to sum Nintendo's digital event up in one word, it would be confusing. Um, everything left me, pretty much everything anyway, left me going, what the hell? Uh, for one reason or another, and Skylanders was probably one of the biggest ones then. Um, so basically, if you don't know, uh, there are going to be two Amiibo-style figures, or should I say Skylander figures, Bowser and Donkey Kong, uh, which will be compatible with the new Skylanders game. Now, they actually look really, really cool in-game. Bowser and Donkey Kong's designs are pretty incredible, their movesets look really good, um, and overall it looks really awesome. My biggest complaint though is, why didn't Nintendo do this themselves? If anything, I see this as a massive kick in the balls to, uh, I guess, Amiibo fans, Amiibo collectors. Because essentially what's happened here now is, Nintendo has said, our Amiibos don't really have much purpose in our games, but you know, you can buy Nintendo uh, Skylanders and play as them in the Skylanders game. I hope that makes sense, but to me that just that seems wrong. Uh, if anything, Nintendo should have been trying to create their own game with their own amiibos, rather than creating additional amiibos for another game that's not Nintendo. Um, that said, they did look really cool in the game. I just I just don't get why they did it. Um, following on from that, I think they announced Zelda uh, Triforce Triforce Heroes. Yeah. Uh, which was a very pleasant surprise. Uh, we knew Hyrule Warriors 3D was coming, so to get another Zelda game on top of that was pretty cool. So yeah, that looked great. Uh, it's basically a sequel to Four Swords, I guess. Well, a spiritual sequel, it's not a direct sequel. But it's it plays in the same style. Well, sort of. Uh, it's more cooperative, whereas Four Swords was more competitive. So it actually looks really good. 
I, I was really happy about this because I've always, always, always wanted a Four Swords style game. Although I have always wanted it on a home console again. Particularly the Wii U where you could use the 3DS's as your controllers. I think that would have done a better job. And I think it's really what the Wii U needed. But, you know, we got it in some form or another. So I'm pretty happy with that. And the storyline looks pretty bizarre. Pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, um, no complaints there. Pretty happy with that. I can't really remember what was announced next, but I do know that they dropped the dreaded Metroid game in there at some point. Um, and let me just say, this was by far the biggest letdown for me at the digital event. So, as we all know now, fans have been crying out for a Metroid game for years. I think it's been about eight years since the uh, previous Metroid Prime. And then Nintendo chucked out this monstrosity. Um, okay, that's a bit harsh. Uh, the game doesn't actually look that bad. It's basically um, a four-person cooperative first-person shooter game for the 3DS. Uh, the problem is it's not a Metroid game. It's, it looks like a game with the Metroid title slapped on it, which is an insult, quite frankly, to the Metroid fan base. Nintendo have received quite a lot of, uh, I'd say, abuse because of this announcement. Uh, especially, for me anyway, because it's called Metroid Prime uh, Federation Forces. Uh, Metroid Prime. It's not even Metroid. They've actually put the Metroid Prime title in there, which is wrong. It's just so wrong. Um, I know there have been quite a lot of people that have showed interest in the game, but in comparison to the amount of people that aren't interested in the game, it, it doesn't really do Nintendo any favours, and they really are running Metroid into the ground with this. Um, they could have so easily got a better reaction uh, by creating, you know, a Metroid game with Samerton. That, that, that probably would have helped. Um, I think fans mainly, uh, well myself anyway, either wanted a first person Wii U title or a 2D 3DS title. Instead we got a first person 3DS title that didn't have Samson. Um, so it was it was odd, very odd, um, and just a massive letdown for me anyway. Next up uh, we could talk about um, oh Animal Crossing. So uh, Happy Home Decorator actually looked really good to me. Uh, my interest in that game has peaked now. Um, it looks better than I thought it did more to it than I thought there was so I'm pretty happy with that uh, we also got the confirmation that's over a hundred amiibo cards which is quite a lot but then Nintendo threw out another what the hell moment by basically trolling so I actually filmed my reactions to E3 um, but I haven't uploaded it and I'm not going to upload it purely because it was so boring it wouldn't have been interesting to watch at all. But one of the biggest trolling moments was the unveiling of Animal Crossing Amiibo Party or something like that. Amiibo Festival, that's it. Um, so <laughs> it opened up and I think myself along with a lot of people went, oh my god, a new Animal Crossing Wii U game. Um, and then quickly that changed to what what the hell is this? And it was a board game. Or is a board game, should I say. Um, now, visually it looks really cool. Um, you know, I, I kind of get it, you know, Nintendo are kind of doing with Animal Crossing what they did, well, what they do with Pokemon, where I think the core series really excels on the handheld, and the spin-offs can, you know, kind of go across the handheld and the home console. That, that kind of makes sense to me, you know, Animal Crossing makes sense on a handheld console. So I'm not too mad about the whole concept of the board game, it's just, it didn't really do much. Um, looking at it, it looks literally like Monopoly or Fortune Street, something like that. There's no mini games, there's nothing like that. It's just you, you go along to a space, it comes up with some cutesy little event that happened, uh, and then you get money, apparently, or lose money. Um, there was no real substance to it, it just lacked uh, anything that really got me interested. Uh, but the Animal Crossing Amiibos look really, really cool. The figurines. Uh, I hope they don't do the thing where you have to tap the character every time you want to move, like they did in Mario Party 10's Amiibo Party. It looks like that might be the case, though, so... Great. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, next up we had Super Mario Maker, uh, which was renamed from Mario Maker, nothing too drastic there. Looked really good, everything that we wanted really, it looks awesome, no complaints there. Um, I think they focused way too much on it during the Direct though, but that is their new, their big Mario title I guess for this year, so fair enough. Um, Amiibo support and that is really, really cool. Um, yeah, pretty content with Mario Maker, no complaints there. Then we had Mario Tennis just chucked in there. Um, I don't know what that was about, you know, there was nothing really said about it. It was just a short trailer. Um, yeah, it was yeah, just chucked in there. It, it was almost like they said, oh crap, we haven't got enough Wii U games. Let's just chuck in some Mario Tennis to try and pad it out. Um, but yeah, n no complaints though, it, 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 looked, it looked all right. It's just Mario Tennis. Uh, and then the final new game was um, a pleasant surprise. Again, it was a franchise we wanted, but not in the way we wanted it. Uh, but this time, it was a bit more positive. So, as you guys may know, I love Paper Mario. A lot of people love Paper Mario, and we really wanted to see a Wii U Paper Mario game. We didn't get that. Instead, we got a Mario & Luigi, so the RPG series, crossover with Paper Mario on the 3DS. So, that's a pretty cool idea. It, it looks really, really cool. Um, I love the Mario and Luigi RPG series because they always bring something new to the table. Uh, so we had the original, which was kind of establishing the series. Uh, the second one, we had the babies. The third one, we were inside Bowser. The fourth one, we were in Luigi's Dream World. And now we're teaming up with Paper Mario, which I think is really, really cool. Awesome idea, not complaining with that. I guess the only complaints I do have is that it literally does look like the Mario and Luigi Dream Team's engine are reused, which, you know, makes sense. It makes sense they'd reuse all the assets, uh, but it just didn't feel extraordinarily new, let's say. So yeah, that's about it for Nintendo's Direct. They did chuck in a lot of other titles in between, but like I said earlier in the video, they were all titles we already knew about. We saw some of Yoshi, which comes out in just over a week's time in Europe, so, you know, I didn't really see the need to put that into the Direct, but hey-ho, uh, they could have just focused on that in the Treehouse. We also saw both Fire Emblem games that are coming out, so Fire Emblem uh, Fates, uh, which again, they showed a lot of that in a Japanese Mini Direct uh, just a week before E3, so... There was nothing really new there either, we already knew about that, and also the um, crossover game for Fire Emblem, which, you know, was cool to see that, you know, it's still alive, kicking. Nothing too mind-blowing, though. And we also got a new trailer for Xenoblade, which, you know, again, looks awesome, but the game's actually out in Japan, so, in theory, you could find out everything you want to know at this moment in time, if you, if you searched for it. So, again it wasn't really necessary it was just padding to me um so as a whole yeah it was pretty underwhelming uh, like i said there are some titles there that look pretty fun but as a whole we came away i think collectively as a group of nintendo fans wondering what had happened um and then to really put the nail in the coffin to say um they ended off the event with a Super Mario Bros. Tribute, uh, it was a montage of people singing or playing the Mario tune. Um, which was nice, you know, Mario's 30th anniversary, very cool. But it, it felt like it was leading up to something, like a, a Mario announcement. Um, but that didn't happen. Uh, so, it, it left a bad taste in people's mouths. Uh, well, at least mine anyway. Um, that said, as a whole, Nintendo D3 hasn't been bad. It's not been the worst, it definitely hasn't been the best. You've got to bear in mind that we also got the Smash Bros. DLC, the Earthbound Beginnings uh, announcement. Uh, so, you know, th th there's there's been content there. It's just not necessarily how we wanted it. And we can pretty much write off the, the Metroid game because I think the reaction that game has gotten, uh, it's either going to drastically get changed or it's just going to get cancelled because... The reception has been pretty horrendous by the looks of it. You know, I, I don't mind. If it, if it stays um, being made, I'm fine with that. You know, it, it looks alright. It looks like it'd be a laugh. But I just think Nintendo need to be careful with the Metroid franchise next time around. Uh, but yeah. That's just a quick rundown of my thoughts and impressions of E3's digital event. 
Uh, like I said at the start of the video, I'll be making a top 5 worst moments and a top 5 best moments. The majority of them were kind of touched on in this video, so it's more of an elaboration of those thoughts. Uh, so be sure to check those out guys, um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of E3, and look forward to these new games.